I'm going to show you something which is trivially simple when we think about all the other numbers that you've known about. Square roots are not hard to work out until you're in the complex world. And then they're really hard to work out, at least with the tools that we've got at the moment. Okay? So let's just consider, consider. If I have a complex number, z, right? And by definition, a complex number has two components, namely the x, the real part, and i, y, the imaginary part. So I've got these two pieces, OK? If I've got this complex number, then my question is, what is the square root of this number, right? What is the number? I know how to do multiplication of complex numbers. We talked about that before. It's just like multiplying two binomial terms. It's fine. What would the square root of this number be? Okay. Now, let's just give this number a name. Okay. I'm going to call it as is a, it's traditional, just like z is traditional for complex numbers. I'm going to use a number, that, a letter that looks like a w, but it's not. It's actually an omega. omega. It's a lowercase omega. Um, you're probably more familiar with the uppercase omega, because I think it's the letter they use for ohms, yeah. I think. right? Yeah. Um, this is a lowercase. Honestly, if you write it as a w, no one will reach. But the difference between a w, this is how I write my w's, and this is an omega. Can you see the difference now? So it's kind it's of like um, a sharp turning point. Like a point. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So so here's your absolute value, and here's your anyway. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what the square root of z is. Okay. But I'm just going to give it a name because that's what algebraists do. They're like, well, if I don't know something, I'll give it a label, and then I'll see what I can come up with. Now, can you see from this line, by definition, if omega is the square root of z, right, then omega squared should be equal to z, z. by definition. Do you, do you agree with that? Okay. Now, I'm just going to adjust this ever so slightly. I'm going to write this um, omega squared. I'm going to put him on the left-hand side and um, make this all on one side. So I'm going to write this. Omega squared take away z is equal to 0. Can you see what I did was I subtracted z from both sides, and then I put everything on the left. Okay. Now, you have to put a big box around this. Right? You might think, you might think, <laughs> well, I haven't said anything profound, have I? But I have. I've said something enormously profound, which I kind of, you might not realize how, how deep and significant this is, because I skirted over it very quickly yesterday. Right? What is this thing? Um, z is some constant. Okay, I, I don't know what it is, but it, it's a constant of some kind. Okay, omega is a number, and I don't know what it is. Okay, it's a variable, as it were. Now, therefore, what I've just written is a polynomial in omega. Right? We're used to writing like quadratics in x or quadratics in y, or cubics in x or cubics in y. This is a polynomial. It's a quadratic in omega. And the reason why I point this out is because I told you, I teased last lesson, this thing called the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay? Now, the fundamental theorem of algebra states that if you have a polynomial, any polynomial that has complex coefficients, what's the coefficient of omega squared? One. One. What's the coefficient of the constant? Well, it's just z, which is a complex number. This is a polynomial with complex coefficients. Therefore, I know that the solutions to this polynomial are also complex numbers. Do you see that? Do you understand the implication? If this is a polynomial and it's got complex coefficients, the fundamental theorem states it must have a complex solution, complex roots. Okay? Therefore, I know I can write omega as a complex number. Right? Now, I've already used x and i. Right? So, for instance, I could say a plus i b. That's another common designation for a complex number. Again, there's a real part, a, and there's an imaginary part, b. Okay. So, that was really important. I, I can't move any further unless I know that the square root of a complex number must also itself be a complex number. Right? Do you see how important that is? Because, for instance, the square root of a rational number is not a rational number, right? You don't necessarily stay in that um, set of numbers. But when you hit the complex numbers, like I was saying, it's the end of the line. We have all of the numbers that you can come up algebraically with. Okay? 